the, uh, the example that I guess you know we set and many student leaders set during the course of the events from April of 2006 to January of 2007 um, is interesting and, and I think you know it's it's to the extent that it represents a, a kind of a major event in the, in the history of the recent history of, uh, of campus politics I suppose it's worth studying but I, I think that really um, the the events that happened prior to April 2006 are also very much of note um, the president Partington here in my mind after really intensely studying the history of the student association I think this man is one of the greatest presidents that this institution has ever had. Um, I think if you just dispassionately look, at, you know, if you go through and, and dispassionately look at what the, the, the attempts that various presidents, presidents have made to do, the amount of legislation they've been able to get passed, the amount of that legislation they've been, then been able to get implemented, um, I, think that, uh, I think that you have to just, again, from an analytical perspective, regard the Partington administration as uh, an overwhelming success. And it ended as, the, as this documentary begins. And uh, I have always wished that Campus Coup showed more of what happened before. Um, but, you know, it's already very long, I understand. And, uh, you know, many of the other authors just felt that we couldn't include any of that stuff. And the other thing that I want to say that I feel is lacking in the documentary is, is really um, the role of Dan Curtis. I mean, Dan, Dan was a, an amazing student leader who spent two years organizing from Stony Brook to, to Buffalo and, uh, you know, putting together a campaign to win the presidency of the Student Assembly is like, that's big time. And he, he did it really, really well. I mean, he, and he got people fired up all the way across the state. And, um, and you know, and, and I, you know the, 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 the fact that he didn't get to serve, really, for, for more than a couple of weeks, um, I, I think set the entire city system back a ways. He was very good at forging alliances, and, and, uh, and I, I think that we all... I think that we're still feeling the void from him not getting to serve. Uh, but I think the real, if I could, if I was going to say only one thing, I guess, the real overwhelming thing to me is that there's kind of this age old, there's this age old sort of two ways about thinking about education and about each person that, that each generation that comes in. Um, you know, some of you have seen the famous footage of uh, the Chancellor of uh, Cal. Uh, standing at Seder Gate in 1968 during the protests during the Vietnam War and responding to student protests by saying uh, that part of the responsibility of being an administrator is to pretend that the protests of each new generation are really fresh and new. Um, and, and honestly, frankly, I think that that's not entirely wrong. Um, but sometimes the, the, the things that a generation says are actually fresh and new. And I think that what we're witnessing now, what, we, what you all have come to SUNY New Paltz in the midst of, is a deep change in the culture of the species. I think that we've spent thousands and thousands of years figuring out how to do agriculture, and then a few hundred years figuring out how to do industry, and now we're in this very radically new, momentous, forward motion of information technology. The ability that you have to communicate with one another is m multiple generations advanced from what we had. Generations used to take 20 years to, to have a sort of revolutionary shift in the toolkit that's available to students. And now, all of a sudden, for the first time since bipedal locomotion, we are completely reinventing the tool set that's available to an, the individual every couple of years. And there are technologies that are coming that need to be absorbed very, very soon and very quickly. It's not going to be long before I can discreetly wear an eyepiece that allows me to share my visual and auditory experience uh, and that other activists can then, can then see what I'm going through in real time so that I can you know, document my motions and uh, really have an understanding of where I am and what I'm doing. And, um, I think that, that this, is, this can be used for surveillance, obviously, and this can also be used probably to, to end police brutality in the world. Right? There are two different ways that these things can, can all be used. I think it's no coincidence that LSD and the atomic bomb were discovered so near to one another. Right? These, there, there are two paths, clearly, that each, each of these inventions can go down. And I think that what this event, I realize, and thinking about it, represents is that there, 
if, if you look at the, the power dynamics of education, typically we think of institutional memory as belonging to who? The administrators and the faculty, but not the students, because students come in and out, right? They're in and then they're gone four years later. And what I think is happening right now, in some ways for the first time ever, is the organism called the student is, is having, is making memories. Right, without, I mean, it's not just Campus Coup. I mean, I think Campus Coup is a tiny, not even a blip on the great radar, but all of a sudden, you are coming to, you are coming to this institution at a time when the student organism can easily remember what happened just a few years ago. It's all documented, it's all out there, every newspaper clipping. There are wikis on almost every campus, like the one that, that we have here. And now you're, you're in a position where there, you know, Facebook timeline, you know, there, there are these, the, the ability to remember what happened just before you got here. Because short of that ability, the, the, the retrograde amnesia that is experienced by the student, by the person who aspires to learn, is, I think, one of the defining characteristics of the, of the industrial age, and one of the things that really stops education from being as great as it can be. And I think that we are either just have or are about to completely remove that restriction. I think it's probably the most exciting time you could possibly imagine to be a student for that reason. And I think that it changes completely the power dynamic between students and faculty and administrators. And frankly, this is the last thing I'll say, it's not surprising that some members of the administration, uh, some people in power everywhere, in the face of this big change, do the wrong thing. It doesn't make them bad people. Uh, it doesn't, I think, I think in the new paradigm, I think we even need to accept that someone can make a horrific mistake, even a mistake, even a moral lapse like we saw here. It doesn't mean that they need to lose their job, lose their position, lose their ability to guide. You know, I've heard, I, I know there are people, some of, there are definitely people who recently have continued to say to me that they feel like they want to call, for example, for David Rooney or Karina Karachi's resignation. Um, and and I, I've been thinking about what that really means. I called for Karina Karachi's resignation days after the video came out. And I'm, for the first time publicly here, saying I think I was wrong. I think I misjudged the situation. I don't think that, it, I don't think that her action in this case represented the kind of, so I, I think that we are moving into an era where a, a moral failing like that can be resolved without needing to expel this person from the community. That's what they tried to do to us, right? Let's not try to do that to them. Um, I've heard other people say that they want to seek an apology. Um, maybe, you know, I, I'd appreciate one. I think RJ deserves one even more than I do. Um, maybe that will happen if we can communicate in a collegial way. I think that we're still a long ways from having the maturity in, in all the parties in the educational system. Um, and, and this even goes to the larger, the larger issues that have taken up a lot of our consciousness lately. We're a long way from having the maturity where I think we're ready to sit across a table and when we do something wrong, say, I'm sorry and I fixed the problem. But maybe we'll get there. And it, it, the real question is, does issuing an apology make it less likely to happen? Does it make SUNY New Paltz a better place? If it does, if you think it's part of your tactical tool set, because I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not here on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't know. If you think that that's the tactic, and you really believe that it's for the purpose of bettering the institution, then you know maybe that's the tactic. Um, but in the great scheme of things, I think that the deeper, the deeper, the, the, the deeper maxim here is that we need to slow down complaining about how other people behave. Stop referring to anybody as they, whether it's the government, whether it's, you know, we, we just, just generally, whether it's the 1%, right, that's the popular boogeyman right now. Stop, <laughs> stop, and I hate that, I hate that language. We're the 99% and they're the 1%, us and them, and we're good and they're bad. That's, that's, that's totally contrary to the kind of consciousness that it takes to sit down and develop a tool that will help you to be more free. And I think that instead of, instead of constantly asking people who we perceive to have power to change things, sometimes that they want to change and can't, um, we need to just build tools that make us freer. And usually those tools are tools that those people end up liking. Like the internet is such a tool. Uh, so. Uh,
in general, I think that, and this is the real last thing I'll say, <laughs> is that uh, you know we, we need to we need to get to a place where we don't. It's I think it's unfair to your unfair to someone who's in a position of power to say, well, I need to trust them before I can work with them. They they can't. Someone who is part of of this this it's a very bizarre power structure that is not terribly organic and, and a lot of people who are part of the power structure don't like it and don't want to be there and want to liberate themselves. It's not fair to, to, to ask them to do something that, that demonstrates that you can trust them. That's, that's contrary to the whole, to, to human history. Um, so, you know, instead I think you need to learn to be friendly with people while always being able to hold them accountable. You need to have a collegial relationship where you can always keep tabs and, and really kind of have a, have a kind of relationship where you have the level of back and forth where you don't need to, you know, Ronald Reagan said trust but verify, maybe it's just verify, where you can verify. Uh, you know, we elected a guy to the presidency of the nation and he has continued to bomb brown people around the world and, and crack down on whistleblowers and do, you know, all the things that we hoped that President Obama wasn't going to do and he's done them worse than anybody ever before. Well, why? That's, na that's natural. That's like you put, you put a fence around a garden and then you never tend the garden well, of course it's not going to do what you want it to do. So I think it's up to us to calmly, peacefully, thoughtfully, and in a mature way, just tend the garden. <laughs> right? So that's all I'll say. I mean, my sense is that I don't really either, and I don't think they really did either. You know, I, I don't, I'm sure if they could go back and do it again, they would do the same thing. I mean, obviously they, you know, it's not a good situation for them either. Um, I mean, part of it was that, part of it was, uh, I, I think, there, there are a number of factors, and I think a lot of them are distillable into uh, the following. Since, you know, since the, the Greek notion of the university, um, there has been a sort of triumvirate power structure between students and the people that teach the students and the people that manage the people who teach the students. And um, when, when students and faculty get together and kind of coalesce their interests, there is, I think, a, a reflexive sort of fear that um, the, the, you know, the manager's uh, experience. And I think that a lot of it is that that was happening. We were like very tight with the faculty. And I, you know, I think it's probably something, you know, I mean, RJ and I might not agree on this, I'll be upfront with you, but um, something like if you, if, you know, you have someone sitting directly in front of you and a third party comes and sort of taps your knee and you kick the other person in the shin, and they go, ah, oh, why did you do that? I, th I think that some of that dynamic, I think that a lot of this was just reflexive. That there was a, just a, a, like, the, 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 the intensity of student and faculty power was growing so fast, mostly due to small technological solutions. Um, and I think that that just triggered, triggered a reflex. That I, I think that years later now, six years later, that people are, you know, this was, this was, the, the, this was kind of like the, a, a very accelerated time of the snowball going down the hill. When we first got to school, the sort of revolution in the, in the tool set was at like the four year mark. Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, there was no YouTube and no Facebook when we, when we came to school. No YouTube and no Facebook when we got here. Seriously, think about that for a minute. And I think that now the rapid development and deployment of new tools is just the status quo. So my, my hope and belief is that the, you know, the sort of radical acceleration of student and faculty power will be more welcome as it inevitably happens again and hopefully more peaceful. I mean, hopefully people don't repeat the mistakes that we made either. That's my sense. Are you guys still active now? Yeah. 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 Well, I uh, 
I try not to be too much of a hermit, but people might not realize that I actually live in New Paltz again. Um, and I uh, run an organization called Slash Root. And uh, Slash Root is, uh, uh, we, are, we are focused on, mostly on technology development. Um, we, are, we, have, we have classes and we try to teach, you know, it's funny that they, they called me a confrontational uh, anarchist uh, <laughs> yeah. because I, I think of myself as very non-confrontational. I try to teach non-confrontational ways of, of uh, developing technology. And, and when I say developing technology, I really mean most of our classes are about how to program, you know, and not particularly political. But again, I think that learning how the tools work, um, I, I, think is, I think is a feat of activism. Terence McKenna, who was quoted at the end of the film, said uh, one, of, one of my favorite things that he ever said, and that's a hard thing to say because he, he said a lot of really beautiful things. He said that, um, he pointed out that shaman, the, the role of the shaman was uh, as the, the person who gets to peer behind the curtain, right, in the, in the theater of culture, and perhaps even make subtle changes to the gears and the levers that drive the culture, and that now, since culture and technology are in many ways the same thing, that in fact now it's the programmer who has perhaps inherited uh, this, this role. And I don't think of myself as a shaman per se, but I do, when I teach, try to teach with that in mind. And I, I, to me, that's activism. I was just wondering, whatever happened to the site Wikipulse? Because I've been on it since I've watched it before, and it just, no one ever updated it or anything. So whatever happened to that? Um, well, <laughs> I guess nobody is updated. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't have time to edit it anymore. Um, it was Wikipulse, this is the really brief history of Wikipulse is that I started it as a project in the Senate with a couple of other senators in, oh, 2005. Um, and um, the Senate managed it for a while. It got very big. Uh, the Senate felt, for whatever reason, that they didn't want to manage it anymore, so they handed the management over to me. I don't have a lot of time to manage it. It's not something that's high on my radar, but I, if somebody tells me it's down, I try to put it back up. Uh, so it's up now. Um, the domain, wikipulse.com, I think was owned by the Student Association, and they allowed it to lapse, and now somebody else bought it. It's a very valuable domain. It's Surely the most valuable domain for things in New Paltz. It used to be that no matter what you Google, they came up with wikipulse.com, you know, article. Uh, and now it's just .org, and that domain is a bit weaker. Well, not a bit weaker. It's quite a lot weaker for uh, for Google searches. So yeah. I don't know. You know, the student government, I guess, or maybe it was. I don't think I allowed it to last. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but it's up at wikipulse.org, and um, you're welcome to use it for anything that you find beneficial. Jeez, uh, if, if you. If anybody needs administrator for management access, bless you, ask me, and we'll, you know, <laughs> I'd love to have other people. It, it, the important part is that we continue to verify that no changes are ever made to the archive, right? We need to make sure that there's integrity of the archive, that everyone can always trust that what the archive says happened, uh, as far as the edits did in fact happen. And um, I, the Sojourner Truth Library, I believe, has uh, some 12 different snapshots of the archive from, different, from the, those years. Uh, it's not something I'm intensely familiar with, but I, if, if I understand it correctly, that was what the Senate did with Wikipulse while they were managing it. I don't have time to do that, but if someone wants to make snapshots and go down and take it to the STL, my understanding is that they have a place where they keep Wikipulse archives so that people can later on verify that no tampering has occurred. <coughs> Reading minutes is awful, but minutes that have links is like a totally totally different experience. If you've never read meeting minutes with links, believe me, because I know meeting minutes are terrible, but when every single keyword is a link and you're like, I don't really, you know, usually you read a minute and it's, you know, Joe spoke about Form 22A. And, okay, good. You don't know what Form 22A is, you don't know the context, but if it's a link to Form 22A and it explains and gives you links to other times it was discussed, I mean, our, uh, my secretary at the time, Mike Peters, um, absolutely wonderful secretary uh, of the student government, which is a very, very hard job. Is it, who, I don't know, is the current secretary here by chance? No. Well, it's a tough job. And you can see the minutes that he took. Uh, they're really good. Uh, again, you know, I think linking is one thing that wikis do that is um, sort of deep, deeply part of the cognitive process that, you know, for all these years, people have been having minutes for thousands of years. And now that the link is invented, it, it has changed minutes, I, I think. That's my sense. But, you know, and you see for yourself. Anyway, sorry. <coughs>
So, uh, so now I see, I see that uh, you guys lived through this crazy experience where you know the school kicked you out because you were maybe trying to make changes that you felt were beneficial to the student body or you know on a bigger scale. Now that now that you Justin are kind of spearheading a project to lead a new school uh, with this with this kind of life experience. How do, how do we keep this from ever happening? Where, where we are now the board of some big school. So full disclosure, Max is a member. I'm, I, I, I'm one of the leaders too. And, and I don't ever want to be responsible for, for kicking someone out because they're trying to make changes and we're like, oh, well, that's, you know, that's not a good change. We need to do something to get them. No, we, we can't allow this to be us in the future. You know? Yeah. Well, that, and that is that gets right to the heart of the matter, is how do we... We're interested in learning, right? All of us are, we wouldn't be here. How do we, how do we, yeah, transmission of knowledge is a controversial thing, you know? You know what they did to that fucker Prometheus? They chained him to a mountain and had a vulture eat out his liver every day because he showed someone how to make fire. <laughs> no, no joke, that's an important myth and that's deep yeah. in the human condition. Don't teach them how to make fire, right? Teaching is a controversial act. Uh, and, you know, I don't know, I, it is true. I mean, the way that I, the way that I have tried to form and lead Slash Roof is completely, very much informed by my experience here, of course. Um, I don't know, I mean, if anyone wants to come and take a class at Slash Roof, then I, you know, I, I guess I, I suggest that. And I, I hope that we can keep that question in our house because I don't think there's a single there's a single way that we can say, how do we do things differently when we're uh, the grown-ups? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think. I don't. I think it's. I think again, another another facet of the information age is realizing that that is a phenomenon. They, that young people are radical, and they say, when I grow up, I'm going to legalize weed, and then they grow up and they don't legalize weed. <laughs> Why? Important question. Important question for examination. Now. Feel like you have unfinished business here. I care a lot about this campus, but um, in terms of the controversy, uh, no. I, it, to my, I am prepared to completely, unconditionally forgive David Rooney and Ray Schwartz and Stephen Hoskins and Maria Karachi. Uh, and Paul Hartman and Jonathan Raskin, and if there's anybody else that people think are to blame, that person too. Um, but I, I think we need to create an environment where, where we can be assured that this won't happen again. So I'm not sure if that's unfinished business. I don't think it's my business so much as it is your business. Um, you know, to the extent that I have unfinished business, it's just uh, if there's a way that I can you know, with what little time I have, if I can lead or advise uh, or build something cool, um, you know, for you, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to do that. But uh, no, I don't. I, I don't know. Not really. <laughs>
Or can you pass the camera to Matt? Oh, sure. We, we can't, don't tell anyone we did this. <laughs> so, or we'll do like a running Ogo, running at me Ogo thing. Okay, so, so right, well first we'll just do, first I'll just stop you, right? So, so if I try to stop him with all my force, you know, he comes at me and I'm like, Ugh, and now we're fighting each other, right? We're fighting each other. But if I observe the patterns that are present and I observe the motion, I can guide the motion in the way that I like better, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that works in martial arts. Lots of lessons. <laughs> I think that I think that that principle is hugely important on a college campus. Um, we 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 made some mistakes of creating head-on conflicts. Um, don't tell anyone that we just did that demonstration. Our karate instructor was being angry. Um, <laughs> maybe. Uh, uh, we, 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 we made mistakes that resulted in conflicts. We didn't do enough outreach to people who were making the bad decisions. I mean, yes, we met with campus administrators every day, but we didn't, we didn't, we, 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 there's so much that, that we had the ability to do that I think we, we didn't do. And, and most of it, I think that most of it that our, the information generation needs to do is have a firm understanding of the tools that you use and how they work. Um, you know, use open source software I think is good advice, not only, in, not only in the sense that open source software is frankly better and has your interest in mind, but that it represents an underlying philosophy that is different. It represents an underlying philosophy of care about the means by which you achieve your end, because that the means that you use grow into your end. You know, and, and, and you know, I, I just, I think that the, the time for, as, as fun as a big march and protest is, and it's, they're fun, you know, we all love, you know, drumming and xylophones, whatever, <laughs> they're not, I don't think, super, super, they're not as effective as, as sort of soberly and coherently Building a tool that will accomplish, that will that will do, the kind of the, the, the judo way, right? That will that will cause there to be less total resistance in the system. Yeah, okay. So so uh, so we have uh, we have to build our, our tools going into the future if we want to uh, effectively shape the way we um, kind of capture or study the past of. Situations like, like this, for example, we want to be able to more effectively update wiki pulse and do all these things. I mean, how, how, are, we, how are we supposed to, to unite with the campus and with students in formal colleges? You know, I mean, it doesn't seem like, like uh, there's, a, there's a strong connection between what we're doing with trying to develop software and things like this, you know? I feel like, you know, what we're doing a lot of a lot here. That's not really a question for me. That's a question I'd ask of you all, really. And maybe if uh, anybody wants to maybe get together after this and have some advice on that, if it, to the extent that the question is, how can um, you know, how can we, how can we more uh, sort of, I guess, address the needs of students and compel students to, um, to join us? It's a very, it's a very interesting question. I mean, I know, you know, I don't know if anyone even wants to hear about this, but one thing that we've been weighing heavily on lately um, at Slash Root is that. The, we're faced with a real prospect, in fact it's happening, of an entire, 90% uh, you know, of the software industry, um, to the extent that it's an industry, maybe we've got to stop using that word, uh, are men. Very, very male. And I think that uh, we are, there's a danger that we are going to miss some important, uh, I, I, I think that we're, there's a danger that we're going to end up with a tool set that is totally saturated with tools that are made for and by men. Um, and I think that that generally, not only women, but femininity uh, and, and sort of gender diversity is, uh, is something that is needed in order to have a mature thought process about um, about building tools. Uh, I, I would love to teach more people who are less masculine or more people who are more feminine uh, about, uh, about logical expression and about how to program 
Uh, and I think that that will make I think that will make a difference. Um, I, I, but I'm not I'm not exactly sure. I think we're going to do an internship. You know, I'm not sure. But that's a question that probably you all I would value answers from you from from the campus community. Um, you should advertise more about lessons because, like, I really be, I actually use Linux, but like, I really don't know. Like, I know like really basic terminal commands, and like, I don't. Cause my friend showed me, and like, I don't talk to him anymore, so like, I don't really know how to use Linux at all. So like, I don't, and I don't know like how to do lessons. Configs. What? I have configs. No. No. See, like, I don't know. I know like, like W get. And like how to download music, <laughs> like that's it. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I guess people don't. I don't think people on campus really know about like. Well, look, look what happened today. You all tried to play a video and you couldn't even bloody play it. <laughs> it was hilarious to watch. In the time, he, I, I saw many um, very, you know. Yeah, very innocently type VLC into Google, and the first result was a site that was not actually the official VLC website, but some other site that had some piece of software packaged in. And in the few minutes we were there, I already noticed that it changed your homepage in Internet Explorer, and it installed two other pieces of software that you didn't want. And like, this is the state of the tools, and that stuff is just annoyance. There is a deeper and more concerning level of surveillance and censorship. Uh, when you use software where nobody that's a friend of your friend of your friend has ever been able to vet the code, you can't believe that that software is acting in your interests. Microsoft makes software and they make it for them, of course, that's their job. And Apple makes software and they make it for them. Um, and so using a piece of software where the entire code base is open, it's not that you're ever going to look at it or I'm ever going to look at it, but the fact that somebody can means that they're not going to put you know, the, the community around that piece of software is not going to uh, not going to execute processes that are contrary to your interests because they'll immediately be called out on it. And that dynamic, again, it's not just about software. That dynamic, I think, represents a lot of the critique that our generation has about the industrial process. And um, you know, I think it has tentacles in sustainable agriculture. And uh, and there, there's a, you know, there's a lot of a lot of metaphors to be made. Um, so, put up signs in the the one Linux lab on campus, like about less like taking lessons at Slashers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good class. Yeah, I mean, and well, I mean, it's 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 crazy that you come here to have a program, and you your only choice is to use corporate software only for one corporation. You go to use a, a terminal out here or upstairs at the information booth, it's all Microsoft Windows. And it's not like it's good software, it's horrible. <laughs> Windows is horrible. I couldn't even play a video. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have open office on the desktop. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> okay, all right. And also, I will say that the computer science, the computer services guys, Paul Chabay in particular, is a very open-minded, forward-thinking dude. All the, if you go there and talk to them. You know, they, they, these are people who never hear from student activists. They don't know what it's. They, they don't have a sense that uh, that that. Oh, I was trying to have a program last night, and they go, "Program? What program was you trying to run?" No, 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 a program, right? That's the, a program in a room with people. Oh, oh okay, an event, right? <laughs> That, that's that, that, there, there, there's that communication fog where people who are in a position to really help you out, I'm sure have not, have not or how many have you have met Paul Chabay and talked to him? Right, so it's like, there are, you know, there, there are a lot of people on this campus who, um, again, neither did we. We didn't go to Paul Chabay and say these are our concerns. Never, not until years later. Um, although we did meet with a lot of people and we had, you know, some meetings were more productive than others, obviously. I'm sure you know that phenomenon, but, you know, uh, I, I, I think figure out figure out who the people are whose job it is to help you with whatever thing it is, and like schedule meeting after meeting with them and inform them, excite them about what you're trying to do with the thing that they are responsible for. Because a lot of people on this campus have boring jobs, and you can make it exciting, and they will help you if you make their lives more exciting. A lot of times. Um, what do you think about 
the administration trying to move away from the hippie party school image and turning us more into like I don't know the traditional four year school. The glass pyramid. <laughs> turning us into a glass pyramid. <laughs> Simply, I don't think it's within their power. I don't think that, I think that that is not how cultural change occurs. I, I know of no example where cultural change has, has happened for that reason. I, I know of a few examples where um, cultural enrichment has happened in the face of that phenomenon. Uh, you know, you agree it's happening? What? You agree that they are trying to do something along those lines? I think that, yeah, I, uh, sure, sure, of course, they say that. I mean, they're, 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 there's transparency about some of the desire. I mean, it seems that there is a, a, a belief or at least a, a sort of public affairs approach that having a particularly draconian drug policy, for example, will reduce drug use on campus. Doesn't matter that, that I mean, it's clearly not true, um, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I, I can get that. Yet, that there's a perception that, that it's important to maintain that image, I, you know, but I think, look at Lenape, for example. I don't really understand. Um, but, I think that what's interesting is in the way that Lenape will decay over time, right? I think that in time, people tend to take people tend to take things that are built in a very sort of sterile, um, not built in a way for sort of organic interaction. And those things, you know, vines make amazing shapes when they crawl around machinery. And I think that I'm interested to see what happens to, to this building. Uh, or to Lenape, or to, to some of the newer buildings when they start to, they start to have their social vibe decay perhaps into something that is more desirable. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, I'm not sure how, I don't have my finger on some pulse of how important it is that the school change away from being a, a so-called hippie school. Um, but yeah, I agree that there, there is a cultural dynamic, of course, and I just, I think that, you know, people who are interested in, in changing the cultural dynamic of individual social interactions over time, eventually they'll, they'll give up. I don't know, they're, you know, I wish they weren't wasting their energy on that. It's not working, <laughs> it's still awesome, you know. <laughs>